Hi there, this is Dr. Knotts. I want to thank you for joining me in this study of Revelations. Um, today we're going to be doing the Church of Sardis, and this is the second of a two-part message on Sardis. Um, in the last one, I got all the way down through the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which was a recapping or a redubbing of the seven spirits of God. So today we're going to actually discuss the church. And as I said before, this is the most sobering message um, that I've broken down in the Bible. It's a message for this generation. It's a message for all those who want to be truly in God's care and obedient servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you got your Bibles, please join me in Revelations 3. We'll begin at verse 1. Father, we do thank you for this message. We ask that you bless each and every person that hears the reading of your word and hears this message. In Christ's name, open their eyes and heart. Amen. Unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful, strengthen the things which remain, those that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received, and heard, and hold fast, and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. Thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. And as we start here, remember that this is letter, as the others, are all written to the pastor of the church. He is to give it to the church. He's to faithfully minister the word of God to the church. This letter is written by God to the pastor because the pastor is the star in the hand of Jesus Christ. And he begins the introduction here. He says, he that hath the seven spirits of God, and it means the fullness at his command. There is no measure in Jesus Christ. He is God incarnate. And he holds those seven pastors in his hands. Now he says through the pastor to this church of Sardis, Sardis literally means the red ones, those who are covered in their own blood. They have their own dead works upon them. They've never been washed white by the blood of Jesus Christ. They've never been given the white robes, the imputation of Christ's righteousness. But yet they claim that they are born again. And my friend, this is the church today. I would say 80 to 90 percent of the people in the churches today are not born again. Oh, they say they are. They claim to be Christian. But the reason why this world is not being reached for Christ, the reason why there's no difference being made by them in the world, is because they're of the world. Friends, you cannot be a friend of the world and a friend of Jesus Christ. Having a love for Christ, you cannot have a love for the world. It is enmity against God. It means it fights against him. The entertainment, the movie, the, the television, the things you watch, the things you read, the things you put in your head. That's all an enemy against God and against the work that the Spirit of God wants to do in you. The way you raise your children. I was thinking this morning, how many families raise their children to learn how to fast? Whereas fasting is supposed to be a normal part of the Christian life. My pastor was telling me since he started fasting and changed his diet, that it's not just helped him physically. And it's helped him incredibly physically. But spiritually, it's opened his eyes and gave him a deeper walk with Christ than he's ever known. If you're not teaching your children how to fast, you're not teaching them how to be closer to God. He tells this church, I know thy works. You have a name that you live. In other words, you're very popular amongst the Christian circles and those outside. They say, oh, they're really hardcore Christians. But he says you're dead. And that word dead isn't necroy, physical death. It isn't talking about the sarks giving up. It's thanoi. It means you are separated from the power of God. It's not God working in you. It's the God of this world. So he warns the pastor. He says, be watchful. Strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. Now it's interesting. It's a neuter general term, but it means those who are truly born again. And it means their light is about to be given out. The oil in their lampstick, the candle, is about to burn out. And in the Jewish home, and the thief in the night is a picture of this, they would put a lamp in the window, and when the groom was ready to come and get the bride, he would work on that house till it was ready. And when the father said, it's ready, go get your bride, she would have bought 
at her betrothal a certain amount of oil. And when it was the marrying age, she would begin putting a lamp saying, I'm, I'm of age, come and get me, in that window. It was a light for all the world to see that she was taken. Don't even try to court her, don't hit on her, but actually try to keep her testimony pure. But if she ran out of oil before the groom came, it meant he had rejected her. He would watch to see how well that candle was burning at night. And then he would come like a thief in the night because of his great love he would take. And there'd be a ladder outside and he would lean it against the wall or if it was a low floor window, he would come to it and she would leave with her possessions and he would carry her off in the night. And you see, they did that because it would break the parent's heart to the daughter to leave. So they would do this ritual of taking her away so parents would get up and she just wouldn't be there. There'd be no long fight or goodbye. The ritual began because when Jacob went to go get his bride, or, or when Isaac went to go get his bride, he had sent the messenger to do it. You know, Abraham had sent the messenger to go get Isaac's bride. Well, they didn't want to let her go. And so what happened? They kept saying, well, let her stay just a little bit longer. Let her stay just a little bit longer. No, I finally, I can't wait. I have to go. So they began this ritual of the candle in the window. And it was so that they could take the bride and not have any any problem. Strengthen the things which remain. And this means those candles that are getting low, strengthen them. Give them encouragement. Because I've not found thy works complete before God. You have more work to do, he's saying. And, and what's he doing? He's saying, Pastor, you've about given up. You're fighting the good fight. But I want you to remember how you received the word of God yourself. How salvation come upon you. It convinced you of your sinfulness. It convinced you that you had nothing righteous in you. There was nothing good in you. But you needed salvation. And Jesus Christ, the righteous one, that convinced you of him, had come to give himself for you. And you called out for salvation because you knew that had you not received that forgiveness of sins and that giving of the Holy Spirit, you would have been condemned to hell for all eternity. You hold fast to the mercy of God and the forgiveness of sins and the power of God that works to change. And you turn back to teaching and preaching the truth. If not, I will come on thee as a thief, and you shall not know what hour. What's interesting is this means somebody that has such a deep love that he's going to take and pull their soul. They will die a physical death. He's going to take them out of there. He's going to remove them rather than letting them suffer anymore. He says, These are the ones. Thou hast a few names in Sardis which have not defiled their garments. They've been given the white robes, the righteous robes of Jesus Christ, and they have not soiled them by joining themselves to the world or beginning to be adulterous, and adulterous by becoming part of those things of the world that defile us. They walk with me in white. That literally means we're walking the path together before the Father. We're going to come to the end where he's going to bless our marriage. I'm going to present them. At the end of that walk, they're walking together. And this is the, the bride and the groom. And it's how it happened. He would steal her away. They would put on the white robes that he's prepared for her. And then they would present themselves before the father because he sent him to go get his bride. And now they will walk together down that aisle and come into the father's house. And he'll say, here's my bride. She's ready. There's no spot, no stain upon her father. She's kept herself pure. That's an overcomer. He that overcometh, that's the word Nikeo in the Greek. We, Nike shoes, Nike brand, the overcomer. Those that do not give in to the world, that do not fall to the God of this world, they shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot their name out of the book of life, verse 5, but will confess their name before my Father and before his angels. You see, the angels will be there. The bride will be there. And it means confess his name. It's going to say, this one is mine. She gave herself to me. She kept herself pure. She has been faithful. But you see, if you got before the Father and you had not kept your name faithful, your name would be blotted out of the book of life, which meant it would not be joined under his name. See, everybody's name is in that book of life. But the day that you, are, you die and you go before God the Father, if you have not, accepted the Son, been washed clean, and given the righteous white robes of Jesus Christ, he'll look at you and say, those aren't the colors of my Son. You see, each tribe had a color. 
and the bride would wear the color of that tribe. Jesus is as pure white. Every color of the rainbow, by the way, is in white. Black is the absence of all color. So it's a color of many colors. White is. And he would put that white robe. If you didn't have that white robe, he's going to blot your name out and say, you're not a part of this family. Depart from ye that chose your own way. You didn't choose my son. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. This is for all the churches to hear. My friend, is your robe white? Have you given your whole life over to the Lord? Do you control what you watch, what you read, what you see, how you act with people? Do you flirt? Do you overeat? Are you a glutton? Do you not fast? You should fast once a week. And I don't mean chewing gum and skipping one meal. Church is a, so degraded and it's disgusting. Do you know when you fast for 24 hours, the body sub, it, it reboots all the mitochondria and allows it to heal, and get rid of inflammation and fight off disease? God created this body to run a specific way. Do you separate yourself from filth? I had to tell a person just yesterday that they said something. I said, you know, that's, a, that's not of God. That's of the devil. It's filth. If your friend swears, you need to rebuke them and say, listen, buddy, that's not of God. I only want to yoke myself, be friends. I love you, but I'll separate from you because you're not doing what pleases my father. You see, we're married to Jesus Christ. We have to be faithful to him first. He has to come before mother, father, before your spouse or your children. If Christ isn't first, you won't have Christ in your life or anything else. Why don't you pray this prayer? True God and Father. I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. He is the Lord of my life. Wash me white. Give me a fresh start. You make every day new. I want my robes to be white. Put oil in my lamp so it's burning when Jesus comes to get me. Give me your grace and the fullness of your Holy Spirit. I want to be righteous for you. I want to be holy and live a life separated for you. Make me that convicting power. Put your Holy Spirit in me and let it become a stream that flows through me from which others may drink and see how pure the river of life is. Lord, do your work in me. I give myself to you in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. This is Dr. Knotts. I pray that you'll continue with us. Our next church is the Church of Philadelphia. Lord bless you in all your endeavors to serve him.